This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Again, Blue Coal Dealers present radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, The Silent Avenger. The Shadow's exciting adventure begins in just a moment. But first, I'd like to remind you homeowners that right now, when winter is changing into spring is the most treacherous time of all the year. But you can protect your family's health and save valuable dollars by burning blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. And if you want to read the adventures of the shadow in complete novel form, in addition to numerous detective stories, crime problems, and features, simply write us for your copy of the Shadow Magazine absolutely free. Remember... All you have to do is mail a penny postcard to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of this station. Send for your free copy of the Shadow Magazine tonight. You have been duly tried by a jury and found guilty of murder in the first degree. You now appear in this court that sentence may be passed upon you. But before I pronounce sentence, have you anything to say? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Before you pass sentence on me, I'm going to pass sentence on you. You, Judge Wilson, on Sloan, the prosecuting attorney. On those 12 good and true saps on a jury. And on one more, maybe. The guy that really trapped me in the first place. The only guy smart enough to get me. The Shadow. Order! Order in the court! That will do, Joseph Bricker. You have nothing to say in your own behalf. This is in my own behalf, and you'd better listen, all of you. I know I'm on my way to the death house to the chair. But I'm warning you. For every day I sit in the death house, one of you will be killed. Starting with the foreman of the jury. He'll die the day I burn. Order! Order in the court! Joseph Brecker, by the power vested in me by the people of this state, I hereby order you to be taken to the state penitentiary, there to be delivered over to the warden, by whom on a certain day determined by this court, he shall in the manner prescribed by law put you to death. And may God have mercy on your soul. Order's adjourned. All right, come on, clear the court. Right. Outside. Well, it's a sheer bluff, I tell you. How can Brecker kill a whole jury? The DA, Judge Wilson, even the governor. I tell you, he's crazy. Yeah, I'm glad I was not that jury. Yeah, you bet. Some are in gang right now. Brecker's gang are all dead or in jail. I know, but you can't get that crack about the shadow. Nobody's ever seen the shadow. He could appear right in this courtroom and not be seen. I'd hate to have anybody like that. Well, Margot, let's get out of here. It must be very flattering to inspire such awe and fear, Lamont. That has its disadvantage, Margot. Unfortunately, the mystery surrounding the shadow inspires fear and terror in the innocent as well as the guilty. The unknown is so often associated with evil. There's no help for it. The shadow must remain a shadow. Lamont, what do you make of Brecker's threat? Do you think it's just bluff? I wish I did, Margot. Meaning? Meaning Lamont Cranston is going to don the shadow's cloak and call on Joe Brecker in prison. Brecker? Okay. Hello, Danny. Hello, Joe. You got five minutes. Gotta make the most of it. The deputies are here from the state claim to take you bye-bye to the big house. I'll be back. All right. Come on in, Danny. Sit on the bunk. I want to talk to you. There ain't much time. Hey, it's like a cage where they keep animals, huh, Joe? Lay off that, Danny. Okay, don't get sore. Sit down here and listen to what I gotta say. I did Gonna kill you, Joe? Yeah, but they're gonna pay for it, every last one of them. You know who they are, don't you? 
I've told you over and over again. Yeah, Joe, you told me. And you know what you're to do. You remember everything I told you. Don't you, Danny? Yeah, yeah, Joe, I remember. I won't forget. When the newspapers say they put you in a death house, I kill one of them. That's right, Danny. And don't forget, these people I told you about, the judge, the jury, that prosecuting attorney are the same ones that drafted you into the army, sent you over to France. Let you get shell-shocked so it's hard for you to remember things. Sure. I won't forget. Hey, will it hurt much when they kill you, Joe? Stop that, will you? Okay, okay, I just want to know. You just keep your mind on the jury and Judge Wilson. Maybe even the governor. You'll get them all, eh, Danny? Yeah. Yeah, Joe. They won't know what hit them. <laughs> That's the stuff, Danny. And I'll just one more thing. There's a guy that may get after you. He's smarter than the cops. He's the one that really got me. You gotta keep away from him. Don't give him a chance to find you. How can I do that? You gotta keep away from home. Don't go near the flat of the old lady. But Ma will worry if I don't come home No, Joe. no, she won't, Danny. She'll know you got things to do. All right, Joe. What about the fella I can't see? Is he dead? Like all my buddies in the war? The ones that talk to me in the dark? No, no, Danny. This guy's different. He ain't dead, he's alive. You can hear his voice, only you can't see him. But if you ever hear his voice, you'll know he's near you. Somewhere in the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> if he talks to me, I'll fix him, Joe. Sure, but not the way you're going to get the others, Danny. Because you can't see him, see? Now, look. You know those old hand grenades you have at home? Yeah. Well, I want you to carry a couple with you. If this guy ever finds you, if he tries to stop you paying him off for killing me... You just pull the pin of a hand grenade and throw it where you think his voice is coming from. That'll get him. All right, Joe. But how will I know when it's him? You'll know all right, Danny. He has a queer kind of laugh. And he calls himself the Shadow. All right, Breaker. Time's up. Come on, you. Okay, okay. So long, Danny. Don't you forget anything. So long, Joe. I wouldn't forget... I wouldn't forget nothing you told me. Come on, you out there. Take it up. <laughs> that poor dope. They'll do it all right. They'll fix him. Every last one of them if I burn. Who's that? I heard somebody, but there's nobody there. Hey, God! Are you surprised to find me here, Joe Brecker? Shadow. <laughs> expecting me. And yet prisons are filled with shadows. Shadows in the minds of men walking in the shadow of death itself. What do you want? You put me here, sent me to the chair. Why can't you let me alone? Because your career of murder is not over. Because I know you mean to carry out the threat you made in court. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't stop me, Shadow. I can't. Because you're going to tell me how the jury, the prosecuting attorney, and Judge Wilson are going to be killed. You're crazy. I'm not telling you anything, Shadow. I'm not afraid of you anymore. I got nothing to lose. You are telling me, Brecker. Yeah. You see, I can read your mind. One thought is racing through your mind now. It's mirrored in your eyes. Etched on your brain. You're lying, trying to trick me into telling you. All right, I'll tell you what you're thinking about. You're thinking of a man. He, he acts strangely. He's, He's shell-shocked. No. Am I right? No, no, stop it. This man is very close to you. I've got it. He's your brother. His no. name is... Let's see. Danny. Danny, isn't it? No, no, go away. Leave me alone. Thinking that even now your brother, Danny, is hurrying home to get a high-powered rifle out of a trunk. That's true. A rifle equipped with telescopic sights no. and a silencer. You're thinking of Danny's medals for marksmanship, his decorations for valor as a sniper. A sniper so cunning he could hide in an open battlefield. It's a lie. Pick his enemies off at long range and no. not be seen. That's all I need to know, Brecker. All I need to know. <laughs> no. No, you're crazy. You're just guessing. All right, suppose he is. 
You won't find him. You won't stop him, Shadow. Shut up, Rick. Shut up, Rick. What's eating you? Shut up, Rick. What's the matter with you? Who do you think you're talking to? It's a shadow. He's here in the prison. Yeah, well, don't let that worry you, Brecker. There's plenty of shadows where you're going. Come on. Deputies are waiting, and you're heading for the last mile. Every one of you jurors are in danger. You shouldn't be here on the street. This death threat may seem like a lot of hooey to you, but I've been assigned to guard you. And if anything happens, they'll send me back to pounding a beat. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector, but I've got my business to attend to, and I can't hide in my office. <gasps> Hanson, what's the matter, man? Oh, yes, man, look at him. He fell down. Uh, what's the matter with that man? What's going on here? Keep back, get back. Uh, who are you? Greg, homicide squad. Man's been shot. Ah, uh, you're crazy. I didn't have no shot. I Neither did I. Just the same, he's got a bullet right between the eyes. Looks like Joe Brecker is keeping his word. Lamont, can't you do something? Can't you find Danny Brecker? No. No, Margot. He got away. He hasn't been near his mother's home since his brother Joe went to the death house. Danny Brecker. He's somewhere. Hiding somewhere. Waiting to strike again. I've got to find him. Good morning, Mr. O'Hara. I'd like some oranges and potatoes. Good heavens, Mrs. Adams. What are you doing out in the street? I thought the police had detectives watching every one of you jurors that was on the Brecker case. Oh, they've got a detective staying at my house, but I had to have some things for dinner, and I slipped out. Mother, can I have some candy? Yes, dear, of course you can. You just... Oh, Mother. Mother, what's the matter? Why don't you send to me? Sam! Sam! Huh? Quick, Mother. phone the police. Get a doctor. Mrs. Adams Mother. has been shot. Oh, I'm afraid she's dead. Yes, the killer has struck again. <laughs> Judge Wilson. Yes, Harvey? Judge, don't you think it'd be, well, safer with a killer still at large if you had those window curtains closed? Oh, that's not necessary. This apartment's on the 20th floor. Yeah, I know, Your Honor, but just the same, I... I'll answer it, sir. Thank you. Hello? Yes, Judge Wilson is right here, Your Excellency. The governor's on the wire, sir. Here you are. Hello? Uh, yes, Governor. Yes, of course you couldn't commute Joe Brecker's sentence. If you did a thing like that, even to save the rest of the jury, there'd be no more law and order. But look, Governor, don't you think it'd be wise for you to cancel your engagement to ride in the parade tomorrow? It'd be in an open car and a perfect target for any... <coughs> Judge! Judge Wilson! Governor! Governor! Judge Wilson has just been shot! He... He's dead! Shadow will continue with his adventure in just a moment. In the meantime, here is a message of particular importance to families throughout this area who supply their own heat. We are now in a period of the year when all fuels are put to their severest test. However, homeowners who use blue coal have nothing to worry about because blue coal, which is especially prepared for home use, is better qualified to meet sudden changes of weather than other fuels. During mild weather, blue coal banks for long periods with little attention. Then blue coal immediately responds with minimum draft, sending a uniform supply of heat throughout the living quarters of the home. Because blue coal burns down to a fine, powdery ash, it is not only an economical fuel, but a particularly clean fuel as well. Furthermore, blue coal is an American product, mined in Pennsylvania by the Glen Alden Coal Company. Unlike a good many other fuels sold in this area, blue coal is prepared exclusively for home use. So that you can be sure of getting more uniform, more economical heat, blue coal is act color so that you can identify it at a glance. There has been a big swing this winter to blue coal throughout this territory. Sales of blue coal this winter in the Middle Atlantic and New England states show an increase of 10.4% over sales for the same period a year ago. 
So take a tip from these blue coal families. For better, more economical heat, switch to blue coal tomorrow. Ask for it by name. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer, whose name will be found in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Lamont. It'll take you long to get here. Let me help you out of the car. I was waiting for your call, Lamont. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting for days. Where have you been? What are you doing? Well, the same thing the entire police force this city's been doing, Margot. Chasing a will of the wisp. Are you sure it's Joe Brecker's brother, Danny? Yes, there doesn't seem any doubt of it, but the police can't find him, and I haven't a single clue to go on. What do you know about well, him? I looked up his record. He was shell shocked during the war in France. He was an expert marksman, a sniper. Society trained him to kill men. They told him they were enemies, that he should kill them off. Now, with a shell-shocked mind, he's remembering what society taught him. To kill. Yes. And another thing, for the people who've been through that experience, life is cheap. Yes, but these poor people he shot and killed, the jurors and the judge, they were only doing their duty, they're innocent. Yes, individually they're innocent, Margot. Individually we're all innocent, and yet, all guilty. Because this Danny, Joe Brecker's brother, is a product of our own folly. Teaching men to kill in time of war, yet expecting them to respect life in time of peace. Lamont, why did you want me to meet you here? Oh, I, I want you to do something for me, Margo. I want you to go into that brownstone house right over there. Joe Brecker's mother lives in the basement. Yes. Joe is scheduled to die at 5 o'clock. It's exactly 10 minutes from now. All right, Lamont. I'll do it. Where will you be? I'll be with you, Margo. As the shadow... The feeling Danny may come to his mother tonight, either just before or just after his brother dies. Hurry, I've less than ten minutes. Here's the house. I'll ring the bell. Lamont, what shall I tell her? That I'm a reporter? Yes, but don't try to make her answer questions. I hear someone coming. Yes? What do you want? Mrs. Brecker, I'd like to speak to you. May I come in? I don't care. You can come in if you want to. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. Nothing will ever matter again. I know you've been through a terrible ordeal these past days, Mrs. Brecker. How could you know what I've been through? How could anyone know? My one son a murderer and the other one, goodness only knows what or where. Oh, I'm very sorry. If there's anything I can do. In three minutes, they'll be killing my son, Joe. There's nothing anyone can do. It's his brother, Daniel. I'm so worried about him. Why doesn't he come? Oh, why doesn't he come home? Ma. Oh, Daisy. Yeah. Oh. I'd come. Joe said I shouldn't, but I had to come. I knew you'd want me home tonight. Danny. Danny, where have you been? What's Joe been making me do? I've just been doing what Joe told me to do for him. Ma. Who's that girl there? What's she doing well, here? Why, she, she's just a friend, Danny. Just a friend. Come to sit with me. She won't tell nobody you've been here, will she? Oh, no, no, Danny. She won't tell anyone. Ma, they're going to kill Joe in a few oh, minutes. Dear. Five o'clock. And then i got to go out and do one more thing for Joe. Look, it's almost time. Oh, no. No, Danny, no. You, you can't. I won't let you. Let go of me, Ma. No, no. Let go of me. Danny. i got to do what Joe told me. I gotta keep my word to Joe. No, no, Danny, listen to me. I know, I know who's been killing those people, shooting them. Oh, you've got to give yourself up, Danny. They won't hurt you. They didn't know. You didn't know what you were doing. Five o'clock. It's time. It's time. Five o'clock. Joe's dead. Now I gotta go back to the tower and do the last thing Joe wanted me to do for him. Danny, don't. You've done enough harm. You keep out of this. Joe told me to do this. I gotta. I can still hear a voice telling me to do it. Now you'll hear a voice telling you not to, Danny. Voice. I know. You're the shadow. Yes, Danny. And 
sake, for your own sake, your mother's sake, Danny. Don't I... tell me what to do with you. He knew you'd find me. That's why I got this hand grenade. Oh, Danny, don't. I got my hand on a fire and tin. I'm going to pull it out. Stop, Danny. I'm warning you. The voice came from there. In the corner. You told me to throw the grenade. Goodbye, shadow. It's all right. I managed to pick up the grenade and throw it through the window into the court before it exploded. Oh, thank you. I don't mind saying that's the closest call a shadow ever had. Lamont, how long have you been here in your office? What happened? Were you able to trail Danny to his hiding place? No. By the time I got to the street after that hand grenade episode, he disappeared. But haven't you any idea where he went? Where that tower he mentioned might be? No, I've been working on this enlarged map of the Midtown section, trying to find some tall building, some tower Danny Brecker could use to hide to pick off the governor. Then he said something about a tower. He... It must be somewhere along the line of March of Today's Parade, Lamont. Margot, that's the Wardman Tower. But it isn't finished. They stopped work on it. it. It's nothing but a steel what frame. What could be a better place for a sharpshooter like Danny Brecker? There's no work going on there, just a watchman down on the street level. Margot, it's a long chance, but it may be the answer. Come on, there's a minute to lose. My car's downstairs, Lamont. I'll drive you over there. But what if he isn't there? What if he's somewhere else waiting to strike? In that case, Margot, I'm afraid we'll have a new governor of this state. <laughs> Just a couple of minutes now, Joe. Just a couple of minutes, and the governor's car will come along. And then I'll do the last thing you asked me to do, Joe. Wind velocity zero. Range 300 yards. He'll die quick, Joe. Like you died. Yeah. The governor's coming now, Joe. That's his automobile with all the flags on it. That's him, sitting in the back with all those fellas around him. But I can pick him out. I won't miss Joe. <laughs> Danny. Danny Brecker. Listen to me. What was that? Who said that? Who laughed like that? Don't you recognize the shadow, Danny? Joe said, he said the hand grenade would fix it. You see, Danny, your brother was wrong. Put down that rifle, Danny Brecker. How did you find me way up here? How did you know I was hiding up here among these steel girders? Just like I used to hide in the trees in the war. That doesn't matter, Danny Brecker. All that matters is that you must not kill any more people. But I got to. Just one more, Shadow. Just one more. The governor. Down there in that car. I promised Joe. No, Danny. You will never keep that promise. Put down that rifle. Put it down, Danny. Lay it down on that steel girder and crawl back to the catwalk. All right. All right. I'll put it down. I'll put it down. Where are you, Shadow? I still got another grenade. Talk to me, Shadow. Say something so I can tell where you are. Crawl back to the catwalk, Danny. Crawl back to the catwalk, I say. No. No, I won't. I won't. You can't make me. Come here and get me if you want me, Shadow. I don't want to have to do that, Danny. Don't you come near me, Shadow. Don't you touch me. If you do, I'll drop this hand grenade. I'll throw it down here among all those people. I've killed dozens of them. There. I pulled a pin. I'll throw it. Danny. Listen to me. Hold that hand grenade, Danny. Hold it tight, Danny Brecker. See your fingers tighten about it. Your mind obeys mine. Do you hear me, Danny? Danny, hold it. Don't throw that hand grenade. Hold it. Hold it. Hey. Don't throw it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it, Danny. Don't drop it, Danny. Don't drop it, Danny. Don't drop it. Danny. Don't drop it. <laughs> Yes, 
Defense Commissioner Weston. A high-powered rifle fell into the street, fell right in front of the governor's car. I'm glad no one was hurt. Mm-hmm. This is the 30th floor. This is where the bomb went off. Blew the guy to pieces. Good heavens, he must have had a time bomb that went off too quick. Any idea who it was? Yep. Yeah. They found an identification card and some newspaper clippings in his pocket on what was left of him. It was Danny Brecker, Joe Becker's brother. Oh. Well, I guess that's that. Don't suppose we'll ever know what really happened. Anyway, there's one consolation. Looks as if the shadow fell down on this case just as badly as we did. Not quite, Commissioner Weston. Oh, so you got here in time to take credit for this, eh, Shadow? There is no credit. No glory in the death of Danny Brecker, Commissioner Weston. He was a victim. A human instrument of destruction. Fashioned by mankind. That teaches men to kill their enemies in time of war... It expects them to forget their murderous art in time of peace. Danny Brecker was an enemy of society. A killer. But only because you and I and countless thousands made him one. No, Commissioner. There is no glory in this for you or the shadow or for any man. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, again presents another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.